Hello, my name is Hannah Hurdle, and I'm the Library eLearning Specialist at Oppenheimer Library. And today I'm here to talk to you about Universal Design for Learning, UDL, the types of activities and assessments you can find using UDL, as well as the learning opportunities UDL activities and assessments can provide for students. Let's start with our first activity slash assessment, guided peer discussions. This activity falls under the action and expression and engagement elements of UDL. For action and expression, it teaches students how to facilitate and manage information and resources. While for engagement, it fosters collaboration and community and helps students develop methods for self-assessment and reflection. Guided peer discussion is an activity for students that has already been scaffolded by the instructor in order to aid in student discussion and engagement. Guided peer discussion not only provides students opportunities to practice their communication skills, but it also teaches students how to build off each other's ideas. Instructors provide prompts or sentence starters to help guide student discussion. In order to incorporate UDL even further into this activity, provide a list of multiple prompts or questions for students to choose from. One example used in library instruction classes, what did you learn today that you think you can apply to research or classwork you will do in other courses? The guided peer discussion is then broken down into sentence frames, which include part one, my ideas, write down your thoughts on the question or topic. Part two, my partner or group ideas, listen to your partner or group and write down their ideas on the question or topic. Lastly, part three, what we are thinking, talk with your partner or group and decide what you would like to share with the class. The breakdown of the guided peer discussion allows students time to reflect on their own while also comparing and contrasting their opinions slash what they have learned with other students. The guided peer discussion can also be used as a type of assessment, either before class as a pre-assessment or after class as an activity where students can reflect on what they have learned. Now let's move on to flipped classrooms. I'm not going to touch much on this today. If you want to learn more about flipped classrooms or flipped content, check out the video coming October 27th Inclusivity in Learning Styles and Needs, Flipping the Classroom with Flip Content. This activity slash assessment falls under the engagement and representation elements of UDL. For engagement, students learn how to optimize individual choices and develop autonomy. With this element, instructors are also able to vary demands and resources to optimize challenges for students. For representation, instructors can use flip content to guide information processing and visualization for student success. Flip content, Flip classroom content can include assessments and activities, all of which is discussed in the video coming October 27th. There's a flip content handout example of how it is used in library instruction classes included in the supplemental content of this video. The next activity is an inquiry chart. This activity falls under the representation, action and expression, and engagement elements of UDL. For representation, instructors can use this activity to maximize transfer and generalization of information to help with student comprehension. Students, on the other hand, will learn to highlight patterns, critical features, big ideas, and relationships with the help of this element. While for action and expression, students can learn how to facilitate and manage information and resources. In addition, for engagement, while it helps students develop methods for self-assessment, it also works as a means for instructors to help recruit student interest by optimizing relevance value and authenticity through this activity. An inquiry chart is a graphic organizer which provides students with the space to visually arrange information in order to generate meaningful inquiry questions on a topic. These questions would be generated before doing the reading, listening to the lecture, doing the larger assignment, etc. Next, students will, while reading can record information to answer their already established questions on the topic in order to help them foster critical thinking skills deepen their reading comprehension and help them organize their writing. Once a topic has been selected by the students, encourage them to consider any previous knowledge they have about the topic. Example of initial inquiry questions. What do you as a student want to learn about the topic? After reading, reviewing sources, or listening to a lecture related to their topic, students can then record everything on their inquiry chart. Lastly, students form summaries of the information they've compiled and compare the details. This activity can be done individually, in pairs, or in groups. Lastly, let's look at the closed passages activity. This activity falls under the representation element of UDL. For representation, instructors can promote understanding across languages with this activity. In addition, this activity is also a good way for students to practice 
activating and supplying background knowledge in a course to help aid in learning. Closed passages is an activity in which keywords are deleted, covered up, or blocked out. Students are instructed to use context clues in order to determine what the missing word or words is. As this activity helps to direct students' attention to certain words in a sentence, it can help students understand how language works as well as think critically about a text. This activity can be used in the English class to help students learn proper grammar. It could also be used in any course to help students practice reading comprehension for text that is hard to digest or understand. You can even have students do this with their own papers so they can identify overused slash repeated words in their writing. Have students cover these words and replace them with synonyms. All of, these UDL, all of these UDL assessments and activities are found using Goldbook Toolkit. Goldbook Toolkit is an online source which provides resources for educators to help them implement best practices as well as improve levels of instructional support so all students can succeed in the classroom. A link to UDL online strategies like the ones covered in this video is available in the supplemental content for this week's video. These are just some of the examples of the many types of activities and assessment that incorporate different elements of UDL. It can take time and patience to find the right types of activities and assessments for your courses. But remember, the library is here to help. We'd be happy to talk with you about implementing more UDL activities slash assessments or other open access resources into your courses. Again, check out the video coming October 27th, Inclusivity and Learning Styles and Needs, Flipping the Classroom with Flipped Content for more information on UDL and Flipped Classrooms. For assistance with incorporating UDL into your courses, or if you just want more information on UDL, you can reach me at hfhurdle at ulr.edu. I'd be happy to help.